In this video, we are going to configure an instance of Pi interface for OPC DA. So to do this, let's go to the Pi interface node, namely Pi int1. Now, before we begin, I would like to mention that as a best practice, we need to change the so-called protocol order. So what is protocol order? So to do this, let's go to start all programs, Pi system, and choose about Pi SDK. Go to connections from the top and select options. In here, you will note there is something called a protocol order. Note the protocol order is currently Windows Integrated Security followed by Pi Trust. Since Pi interface for OPC DA will connect via Pi Trust, we should have Pi Trust to be the first in the protocol order. But for example, if it's going to be a client node, Windows Integrated Security should be first in this protocol order, as you will use Pi mapping with your Active Directory account to determine user access permissions. So let's change the protocol order here and click on this button so that it can go to the top. And now we have PyTrust followed by Windows Integrated Security. Like, let's accept it by saying OK. And we are good. We can close about Py SDK. Now let's start configuring the instance of Py interface for OPC DA. To do this, let's go back again to start all programs, Py system. And now let's choose this utility, which is called Py interface configuration utility. Click on the open button to create the new instance from a batch file. So click on this. It will automatically navigate you to the 32-bit PyPC folder. And you if I go to the interface folder, I see the folder called OPC int. Here, let's select this batch file which is called opc int dot bat underscore new. This is the sample batch file. Let's say open. And now I need to select the name of a pi data archive to which I want to send the data to. So in our case, it is pi srv1. Let's choose that and say OK. Now, based upon whatever settings were there in the sample batch file, interface configuration utility for this instance is populated with the necessary values. So there is something important, which is point source. Let's retain the same as OPC. Interface ID can remain the same as one. And I would like to just briefly point you to an important attribute called API hostname. In this one, we note that the name of the PyData archive is indicated by the host name. But it could also be represented with a IP address as well as fully qualified domain name as well. This will come up again when we start discussing about buffering mechanism. The next item which we can talk about is adding scan classes. So right now we have four scan classes and if you want to add more, you can add it as well. But in our case, we will leave it as it is. Next, we want to configure the OPC server. So right now, our OPC server, we know that resides on the same node, so localhost is fine, but we need to populate it with the name of the OPC server. So click on list available servers and let's select OPC sample dot OPC DA 20 server dot one. Let's click save so that we can save the settings. And if you want to know what are the things which are there, let's go back again to the OPC client, which is we have on our desktop, let's say run as administrator. 
and if I explore all the OPC servers and this is the one which is there which we are going to use and close this kindly note that if the data source is on a separate node from the Pi interface for OPC DA in that case we need to configure the so-called DCOM accordingly we are not going to be covering DCOM in this uh, online course though there is a separate user manual for configuring DCOM that can be downloaded from OSA SOP tech support website now let's do the last piece namely to create the Windows service so let's create the Windows service by going to, going to the services option and clicking on the button to create the service so let me do that now we have the Windows service created let's go and start the service to see how it's going to work we need to click first on the Pi message logs which is this button before starting the Pi interface so let's expand it a little bit and now let's start the Pi interface for OPC DA by clicking the run button so let's click this of course we have got a lot of messages so let's see what are the messages which we have so it basically read the configuration file which is the batch file which contains all the settings which we just incorporated and if you go down it's saying trying to connect to the Pi data archive it's saying successfully connected to the Pi data archive and if we go down it also states it's connected to the data source as well and I need to also query the Pi data archive to see what are the points which Pi points uh, which are configured in the Pi data archive as of now it is none so it's not going to be able to collect data from the data source and start sending the data to the Pi tags which is residing on the Pi data archive so in summary in this video we understood the steps involved in creating an instance of Pi interface for OPC DA now the next step would be to create the Pi tags in order for the Pi interface for OPC DA to collect the data from the data source which is the OPC server and historize the data on the Pi data archive.